Perfect timing. <laughs> we want to talk about if you run into a, a problem with your dig board, your dig uno, your dig quad, uh, you get it from me or Quindor and it's not doing what you think it should do. Intermittent Tech says, help doc, my dig uno is going haywire. Yeah, that's about where, that's where we're at today, Quindor. That's what we're doing. So I came up with, and, I, and this was in conjunction with Quindor, we, we talked and we thought about what are some of the most common things that people uh, have had issue with or could have an issue with, and how would we, uh, in simple terms, walk somebody through figuring out what the problem is. The Dig Uno or the Dig Quad, I got one of each here. This is a Dig Uno, and I've got it connected and powered up right now, uh, and it's working beautifully. The very first thing I wanna say is that there's a silly thing that happens to a lot of people and they feel real silly when we have to tell them that this is what happened. The problem is they, they'll, they'll hook up their lights and then they'll go, oh, it's working great, but it's only like the first few lights that are turning on, you know, the whole string's not turning on. Go to configuration, LED preferences. The LED count by default is set to 30. So if you have more than 30 lights, it's only gonna light up the first 30. So change this to the number of lights that you have and then all your lights will light up. That's the low hanging fruit, okay? <laughs> That's the easy one. So the first thing to check with, if your WLED board is not doing the right thing, or, or honestly, before you even turn it on, the first thing to check is this jumper right here, okay? This is the 12 volt, five volt jumper. These first two pins, if you put it there, it's 12 volts. If you put it on the next pin over, skipping the first one, now it's on five volts. And that is about your power supply and your lights. Uh, if you have a 12 volt power supply and you connect your jumper to five volts, you can damage your LED board. And I would have a really hard time being able to like just give you a new one, you know what I mean? So I don't want anybody to destroy these. I, I want you to, to be able to get wonderful use out of it. So please don't make that mistake, okay? If you're gonna hook up 12 volt lights, Make sure that you've got this jumper on 12 volts, and I'm pretty sure that they come with the jumper on 12 volts, but there is no guarantee. You have to check that, okay? Please, please, please check. Make sure that your jumper here is on 12 volts. But I do think you might see your lights work, even if this is on five volts, if you have 12 volt lights. But if you have five volt lights and you put this on 12 volts and you hook up 12 volts to five volt lights, that's not gonna work. That's gonna go poof. So if you have this on 12 volts, but this is five, you have five volts coming in and five volt lights, but your jumper's accidentally set on 12, they should still work, okay? But if you have five volt, well, if you have 12 volt power and five volt lights, bad things are gonna happen. If you have 12 volt power and you have this jumper set to five volts, bad things are gonna happen. Okay, next, <clears throat> the data pin jumper. So over here on the side, you've got this data pin jumper, okay? And it is by default set to GPIO 2. There is an option to have it set to GPIO 3. If you've got it set to GPIO 2, which is the default, okay, then your wire, your data wire connection goes right here to where it says, it says L1D. WLED outputs to GPIO 2. So if you've got this jumper on GPIO 3 and you're trying to run WLED, it won't work. So GPIO2, make sure that jumper's on GPIO2. That's what you need for WLED. Make sure that your data wire is connected to L1D. And the D is for data. The C is for clock. And if you don't know what that's for, then it's not the kind of LEDs you have. That's because Quindor built this board with a lot of options in mind. The other things to check, I just wanted to make sure that you've got the right connections. Make sure that you haven't switched your pluses and minuses. Make sure that your 12 volt, five volt, you know, whatever power to your LEDs is in the right pin. Make sure your ground's in the right pin. Make sure your data's in the right pin here, okay? So just double check your wires and then double check your fuse. Make sure your fuse hasn't blown, okay? Those are all the simple things. Uh, next, say you power it on, but the blue light does not come on on your D1 Mini. And if it's a quad, it's an ESP32, which I believe is called a Mini 32. Yeah, it says Mini 32 on it. So if the blue light does not come on on this little controller here, then there's a couple things that you need to check. First thing to do is to take the D1 Mini off. Just It pulls off of these little 
pins here. You're not going to break it. Just pull it off. So connect it to just USB power. And if the light comes on with USB power, then maybe there's something wrong with the board and we need to go down that troubleshoot, uh, troubleshoot that part. If the light does not come on here, then what you would do, the first thing that you could do is try and reprogram it. If you want to reprogram it, you just get the ESP home flasher. This should show up. It should show up as a, as a comm here. If this doesn't show up as a comm, possibly the, the board is bad. Most likely your USB cable is not set up for data. I have to label mine because a lot of them are set up just for power. So I label the ones that I know have data wires inside them. For those of you, uh, some people have asked if you've got a D1 mini like this, if you're on a Dig Uno and you've got a D1 mini, then you're going to do um, the WLED ESP8266 version. If you're running on a Dig Quad, then you want ESP32 LED pin 16. You can use an ESP32 on a Dig Uno. You can do that. It will work. You need to make sure that this is still flashed with the ESP32 version of WLED, but it will work. I'm going to make a prediction here and say that there is a day coming where everything we do is going to be ESP32s. It's not that far down the road. I mean, the 8266s are still good for some things, but the 32s are just much better at a lot of things. So you try to program your D1 Mini. Maybe it programs and it works great. You now have WLED on it. Your blue light is on. Happy days. You take it off, plug it back into your Dig Uno, and off you go. But if you try to program it and you cannot get it to program, it is possible that your D1 Mini is bad. This is why I warned you about the jumper here. Because if you've got this jumper set to 5 volts and you hook up 12 volts here, uh, you can destroy your D1 Mini if the jumper here is set to 5 volts and you connect 12 volt power to it. And I've done this. I've done it. What can you tr troubleshoot besides the D1 Mini? Say your D1 Mini is, is working. You've got it programmed here where, yes, the light comes on here. But when you put it on the board, this light doesn't work when it's on the board. What do you do then? It could be that there's a problem with the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator is this guy over here. So what do you do to check that? If you're playing around with these electronics at all, hopefully you've got a voltmeter. So we're going to check here, make sure, first of all, that we're getting 12 volts. Great. We're getting 12.25 volts. Now we're going to see if this thing is going to give us 5 volts. So down here on the bottom, you have these three connections over here. This is V out, ground, and V in. So I'm going to touch my ground probe to ground, and then I'm going to touch this to V in, and I should get 12 volts again. Great. This is the important part. This is actually how you check the voltage regulator. So I'm going to put my ground probe on ground. And then where it says VO, which is V out, that should say 5 volts. There you go, 5 volts. If you do that and it does not say 5 volts, then the part that is bad is this, this guy. Okay. If that's bad, send it back because I would certainly not want to waste everything else on this board because of like a 50 cent voltage regulator that's bad. But that's how you check the voltage regulator, okay? If the D1 Mini is backwards, ooh, what happens if the D1 Mini is backwards? I would assume that would be pretty bad. <laughs> uh, the D1 Mini backwards, I don't know. That's not going to be good. <laughs> Five volts applied to the wrong pins, etc. Assume it's dead and might kill more components too, yeah. You always want this controller to be oriented so that the USB input is facing the fuse. And that is not an accident. Quindor designed it specifically that way uh, so that you wouldn't connect power to your Dig Uno and power to your control board because that will make bad things happen as well. So it's the same way on the quad. If you want to make sure that you've got your orientation correct on your controller, the USB input should always be not facing out. It should be on the inside because you don't want to be able to plug in a USB while it's connected to the board. That's a no-no. So in order to help us not do that, Quindor oriented it so that the USB is inside, not on the outside. Okay. If this is on, the light here is on, but you're not getting output to your lights, you can check that there's not a problem between the controller and the data wire, which really is just the 
logic level shifter. Uh, you can check that by connecting your LEDs directly to these pins here. So let's do that. So I've got here a little female jumper. So I can put this on the pin over here that says GPIO2, and then I can just tie it into my data wire that goes to the LEDs. It, this should still work. Oh yeah, it does still work. And it actually doesn't even, it's not even uh, flickering. I'm kind of surprised about, but anyways. I bypassed the logic level shifter on the board here. If you connect up your LEDs like this and they work, but when you remove this jumper and connect this back to the terminal down here, they don't work, then you have a problem with the logic level shifter. Most of the time, the problems that people are having are really, you have this jumper on five volts and you connect 12 volts here. That's the quickest way to destroy your D1 mini. So please don't do that. So the same thing, if you put 12 volts here, and this is on five volts, you could blow that. Oh, I bet that's what happened to Jaren. Okay, uh, that was all the troubleshooting stuff that I wanted to go through. I think we covered it all. How to decide which fuse to use on the Digi Uno, Mark says. How to decide which fuse to use. You want it to be big enough to handle all of your LEDs, but you want it to not be so big that your wires end up being the weakest link. <laughs> The one that it comes with is 10. I don't know, what would Quindor say? Would you go Would you go bigger? Would you say 15? You can go 15 and not hurt your board, but 15 amps through a 20 gauge wire, you're pressing your luck quite a bit, I would say. Space heater wires, yeah, you'd have some, you could definitely use this to warm your hands if you put 15 amps through it. The way it works, this is for everybody who hasn't, you know, done electrical stuff very much. Your lights are going to determine the load, okay? So that the, your lights are going to determine the number of amps. And that is based on what color they are, how bright they are, how many of them there are. All right, so that, that determines the draw. So let's, let's imagine you've got 10 amps worth of draw, the load, 10 amps of lights. If you've got one set of wires like this, the, the data wire doesn't really have a load on it, doesn't have a lot of amps in it. It's very, very low current. But the, the plus and the minus are going to have that whole 10 amps on them. If you were to just add a second pair of wires from here, they would split the current. One pair would have five. The other pair would have five. And they would be a lot less hot. Would they all be controllable individually or each run be mirrored? You're talking about splitting the data wire. So we got to really separate in our minds the difference between the data and the power. If you split the data wire, yes, they will all be mirrored. They will all be doing the exact same thing. But if you split the power, it's just going to boost the voltage at some point in the, in the strip and split the current that's coming back through those wires. The trace on the circuit board is the weakest link. Sometimes, Paul, but not in the case of the Digino because Quindor has engineered it to be able to handle 15 amps. Not everybody understands that you can have these problems, right? You don't know what... You, you know, not a, not a lot of people that haven't played with electricity understand what they can't do with it. And some people will try and take a 22 gauge wire and run 10 amps through it, and it is going to melt. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, I got Dr. Pepper. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, we spilled Dr. Pepper everywhere. Okay. Adios, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you kicked over the Dr. Pepper. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.